All right, what's going on, everybody? This is Peter Renna back with another edition of Dollar Bin Digging here for comicbookinvest.com, where you can catch the article every Friday. And I do this little video that I put on my YouTube channel as well as over on uh, Tales from the Flip Side every week, so you can check it out here or there, you know, whatever you fancy. Now, it's no secret that I love most things 80s. That's the decade that I grew up in, so I'm kind of, you know, focused on that well, a lot of times. And just for fun this week, I thought it would be fun to go back and look at some of these cartoon properties uh, from the 80s. Now, it's not just cartoons. We're talking cartoons, comics, and a lot of cases like games and stuff, because it, that was a decade when it, it, things just kind of spread out across most media in some form or another. So, I don't know. Hopefully you like this list and, uh, you know, let's dive right into it and uh, see what we got. Now, if you follow me at all or saw my uh, my toy videos, you'll see that last weekend I did a Dungeons and Dragons toy video because I was curious about those toys. I recall them and I wanted to look back into them. Now, as you know, Dungeons and Dragons is a popular, you know, role-playing game that everybody knows. Uh, I personally really remember it mostly for these, uh, you know, choose your own adventure books I used to read a lot when uh, I was younger and uh, picked up a couple so this way I can get my son into them, hopefully. But uh, outside of that, there was you know, a cartoon series that wasn't half bad. Uh, it didn't last for very long. I think it might have only been one season, but I was entertained by it. I mean, dragons, fantasy, sorcerers, wizards, that kind of thing, I I'm down. But uh, this obviously was a, co a comic book as well. Now, this series, as Advanced Dungeons and Dragons run, it's, you know... It did, doesn't do much all, all in all. Only really issue one actually has any interest and value these days. But, you know, just keep an eye out for these because it's just fun books. But, again, issue one is the one you probably want to look out for. I uh, see the centaur. You got all kinds of different magical, you know, characters, paladins, you know, and what have you there. Fun little series. It only lasted about 36 issues, which I know it sounds only 36 issues. But for back then, that wasn't very long. I mean, we're talking a lot of, you know, runs that go in the hundreds. But, uh yeah, so you can find most of those uh, Dungeons and Dragons cartoon uh, comic books. I'm sorry, in the uh, in the cheap boxes. There's only again, like I said, 36 issues, and I think an annual in that DC run. But uh, it later got revived. I think IDW got a hold of the property, and you know, there's some pretty cool, pretty cool comics that came out of that as well. Some multiple covers and some variants. So that's also something you might want to keep an eye out for. Just. I, you may not recognize most of this stuff, but when you're flipping through them, you just look, you know, IDW does a good job of letting you know what the covers are. So just, you know, take a look and look for those RIs, and those are the retailer incentives. So most of those, maybe they don't do too much, but it's still better if you can find it for a buck or less, just grab it because it's an incentive. Yeah, you, you never know. Maybe you find a rare one. So that's just kind of the weird, you know, things that you should be keeping an eye out for when you're digging in those uh, cheap bins, especially with, uh, you know, IDW books. So Dungeons and Dragons is my first pick. So we're going to move on with our next selection, which is Silverhawks. Now, this was a pretty fun toy line as well. Uh, from that same time period, there was a cartoon. Uh, again, I don't think it lasted very long, as most cartoons back then didn't really go much more than a season or two. But uh, the toy line was pretty fun. I mean, they're, they were very shiny. I remember they had uh, a lot of sheen to them. They are very glossy. And uh, they, they kind of stood out. Yes, these characters looked, you know, looked familiar. I mean, if you look at the look at this setup, they it looks a lot like Darkhawk. So keep that in mind. Like Darkhawk looks like he might have been a little bit inspired by our, our Silverhawks here. Uh, but that said, it's still a pretty cool line, and uh, Darkhawk's kind of a cool character too. So you know, obviously keep an eye out for him as well. But I'm probably going to cover these uh, these toys. Uh, at some point in my uh, top 10 toy videos, uh, getting around to it. Again, there's a ton of toys, especially from the 80s that I love to cover. I know I need to branch out, do some more, hit some stuff from the 90s, a little bit more recent stuff. I even got some older stuff, some of the stuff from the 60s and 70s uh, in the hopper as well. But, yeah, I only got so much time. So one a week is all you're really going to get. We'll get around to this stuff eventually. So keep an eye out for Silverhawks uh, eventually. But for this, for the comic books, uh, you want to keep an eye out, obviously, for issue one, because that's the one that would, uh, you know, draws a lot of people's interest. Everybody looks for the first issues of series like this. Uh, it only ran for about seven issues, so it's not a very long run. It's one that you could, you know, collect pretty easily if you go out and, you know, pretty mindful of what you're looking for. So uh, seven issues isn't too hard to complete when you think about it. Now, newsstands, obviously, commanding a premium these days because uh, people are looking for those newsstand copies. So if you find one of those, you might be able to get a little bit extra for it if you're looking to, you know, to flip it or move it. 
And another little item you might want to keep an eye out for, you may not find it in boxes because these kind of things stand out, but this uh, series did come in a comic pack that did have uh, issues one, two, and three, I believe, in it. And these sealed comic packs, you know, sometimes do rather well. I think, like, this pack you can get, you know, probably a 70, 80 bucks for one if you, uh, if you find it. So... Those are just kind of weird oddities that you might find out there at flea markets or, you know, garage sales, just stuff that's just thrown around. It could be an unopened comic pack of Silverhawks. And just yeah, keep an eye out for it. It could be very, very cheap. So that's another title and cartoon that you might want to just uh, check out if you haven't seen it before. So we're going to move this train on to our next property we're going to look at is Mask, Mo Mobile Armored Strike Command with a K. I know, it's a stretch, but, you know, the 80s, we loved our acronyms. Now, Mask was another great toy line. Uh, you know, it was uh, you know basically vehicles that transformed into other vehicles. Cars became flying cars, and you know trucks became tanks. And uh, it, it's just like a transformer in a sense, but not really. They just kind of altered the uh, you know, from one vehicle to another. They came with these pretty cool little figures, and they all had you know masks, which was part of the uh, or helmets really. But that was kind of the uh, shtick that they were going with. Again, I love this toy line. I'll probably cover it at some point, too, on Top 10 Toys. But for now, we're going to look at the, the comics you should be looking out for. Uh, there was a preview book. It's kind of like a teaser, almost like an ash can, I guess you would say. It looks like it's all just newsprint. It doesn't even really have a cover. Uh, so you never know. That could be just tucked away in a box somewhere. So you just pull it out and just grab it. I found plenty of like freebies and things like that just buried in dollar boxes. And, you know, it's worth a buck because a lot of that stuff's not easy to find, uh, you know, these days. But... Once again, you're obviously going to be looking for number one. And uh, this number one, it was part of a mini series that first started it off. And uh, I think it only ran for about four issues. But in addition to just finding number one, which, of course, people will probably look at newsstand a little bit, you also want to look for the Canadian price variant on this one because that one does a little bit better as well. Uh, as you can see, the regular uh, cover price is 75 cents. But on the Canadian ones, it's a uh, 95 cents. Just, you know, price differential, you know, a little bit of a currency exchange so keep an eye out for the uh, canadian edition of it because that also moves for a bit of a premium and like i said it was a four issue mini series to start so any one of those four is just kind of fun to grab it's not very long and then you got into the regular kind of ongoing series uh here as well so you, you might want to you know keep an eye out for it you can find those in boxes as well uh another one of these it's i just saw one that sold just randomly for like 18 bucks or something was a what is this i think this is issue uh Issue eight, and I think there's only nine issues in even the second run, but this issue eight, I just got, you know, as a little robot there watching the girls playing volleyball or beach, you know, playing with the beach ball there. Uh, you know, it's just one of those covers, almost like the Archie collectors would probably be interested in a book like this. So, yeah, if you see it, I'd, gr I'd grab it because that's another one you can just probably flip. But you're really looking for, again, that first issue. Uh, once again, IDW, it's another property they, they got a hold of. And, you know, there's rumors they might be doing like a larger scope Hasbro type of deal where they, you know, cross over ROM and Mask and uh, all of these uh, crazy properties that they picked up from the 80s. But the IDW series, uh, you know, maybe it's out there too in the cheap bins. I don't know if there's a lot of people buying it. I remember when they came out, but I don't see these a lot in the in the dollar bins near me. But I would look for them just to kind of check out this series because I don't know much much about it apart from I know in that first uh, first run there was a pretty cool paul pope cover that i really kind of wanted but it just was out of my price range at the time so i just never got a hold of it but yeah it's still kind of cool so that idw series again is a uh, yeah one you might just find out there so keep an eye out for that too but uh it's really that original dc run that's gonna uh yeah is the one i'm looking at for today so we got one more book and and that next book that we're looking at is Space Ace. Uh, I recently found uh, a few of these in a 50 cent bin at a shop near me. And that's also another reason why it got me thinking about this topic. It wasn't just doing the Dungeons and Dragons uh, toy video, but it was finding these Space Ace books. Uh, so trying to put that together, put the two concepts together is kind of how I got to this 80s cartoon kind of, uh, kind of theme here. And while Space Ace had a very, very short-lived animated little thing that they did. This is more well known, I think, for the old game. There was like the old cabinet game that you could play in arcades that was damn near impossible to get through. I never understood it. And it was always super expensive. You had to like time everything right. I, I just couldn't do it. And I also heard that there's a laser disc game too, but I didn't have a laser disc player growing up. So I, I don't know much about it. So we were uh, strictly VCR, no laser discs in my house. So did not have that. But you know, this is still a uh, a series that's kind of cool. I mean, it's Don Bluth. It's got that familiar look. It's a 
kind of has that same tie. They got some toys out there that you can also get some, you know, classic little, you know, little nuggets. And even the game has been ported over to a lot of different uh, other systems over the years. I know the old Commodores and think had a, like a hard disc version that you could play. And it even went up through, you know, Super Nintendo had a video game version, which is yeah, kind of cool. It's not exactly the same as that original game, but it's still kind of fun nonetheless. Uh, and again, this is from the same, you know, Don Bluth creator. He also has that Dragon's Lair uh, property that uh, I know is getting a little bit heat as well because of, uh, I think Ryan Reynolds is possibly attached to do something with that, you know, somewhere down the line. But that that said, uh, these Space Ace books are kind of interesting. There's actually two different uh, versions of it. There was the uh, this first run that was actually done through CrossGen. Uh, they did three issues of this series. Uh, and this is the same kind of run. They actually did a He-Man series as well. But uh, CrossGen did these first three issues of Space Ace, and then they actually went over to Arcana. I think Arcana Publishing was the one who picked it up after that. And they basically reprinted issues one, two, and three, and uh, followed it up with another uh, three issues. Now, that first run also had a pretty hard-to-find Graham Cracker uh Graham Cracker variant that's out there. So you might want to keep an eye out for that. I don't know if you can find it in a cheap box, but even you can find that online for cheap. Uh, think about scooping it up because that thing can move for a couple hundred bucks uh, if it's out there. It doesn't come up very often. Uh, a lot of those old Graham Cracker variants, especially with the uh, those cross-gen books, it was almost like the same He-Man books that had that uh, faker, that fake core uh, cover. Uh, pretty expensive, pretty hard to come by. So just keep an eye out for that. But his entire run's kind of fun. Uh, prices are kind of inconsistent. Uh, some get really expensive, and then sometimes you can find them on the cheap, you know, if you're looking online. But keep an eye, again, on those cheap boxes, again, for both the, the Space you know, space Ace here, as well as those Dragon's Lair books that I mentioned, because those are definitely on, on the hotter side right now, because people, again, are looking for them, because it's soon to be adapted, or possibly adapted. So it's got a little bit of interest and a little bit of heat behind it, but it's not just, again, the first issue in this case, uh, because issue six, like the final issue of the series uh, published through Arcana, is also kind of tough to find and uh, not seeing a lot of sales, but the asking prices are pretty steep. I think it's, uh, you know, 40 to 50 bucks, I think, out there. Uh, people are asking for it. So if you find it, that's a nice little return, especially if you can find it in a 50 cent box like I did. So with that, that's what I got this week for these. Uh, just a quick little fun little, you know, 80s. 80s look back, a little throwback. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed those picks. Please like and subscribe to my channel as well as Tales from the Flipside. Bookmark comicbookinvest.com because check out all the articles we got dropping there. Not just mine. I mean, fellas are doing a, a bang up job every week. So every day there's new stuff being uh, being dropped on the site as well as new stuff hitting uh, you know the Tales from the Flipside YouTube channel. So check that out as well. I put out as much as I can on my personal channel, but you know, what I put out there is usually on both Flipside and on uh, on mine. It's just, if you want to view some stuff on mine, like this video, if you hang in uh, during the post credits here, I have like one more honorable mention I'll throw your way if you're watching it on mine. So with that said, I will see you guys all next week.